Hey guys, this is Sandeep from Revitalis and welcome to our very first smartphone video of 2021 and this is the camera review of the Mi 10i. And before we get this started, please do make sure to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications to avoid missing any videos from us in the future and also wishing all of you a very happy new year. Now let's get this video started. So to start things off, you get a quad camera system on the Mi 10i, which has a primary 108 megapixel camera. Now this is the first smartphone in India that comes with the Samsung HM2 sensor. And it's a large sensor with one by 1.52 inch sensor size and has nine in one pixel binning, which gives it a total 2.1 micron super pixel size and has F1.75 aperture as well. The secondary camera is an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle camera with f2.2 aperture and you have two 2 megapixel cameras out of which one is a macro camera while the other is a depth sensor. Let's start with the primary sensor. Now the primary sensor can capture up to 108 megapixels in terms of resolution and this results in large file sizes up to 30 MB in size but by default it captures 12 megapixels of resolution owing to the 9 in 1 pixel binning and usually the size of these files around one third that of the full 108 megapixel files. The main thing that the sensor will impress you is the sheer amount of detail that it captures regardless of whether you're shooting in 12 megapixel mode or in 108 megapixel mode. Now the difference between the two modes is very subtle and is only evident when you pixel peep because unlike some of the other phones that shoot in high resolution be it 48 megapixel, 64 or 108 megapixels, this does manage to do good HDR even in the full resolution mode. So no blown out highlights or underexposed shadows even though you're actually capturing in 108 megapixels megapixels. Now apart from this when you zoom in you'll notice the main differences being the slightly less contrasty images on the 108 megapixels as well as the better resolved detail and less watercolor effect that is there on the 108 megapixel but also slightly higher levels of noise. Now the tuning is something that can be updated or changed with software updates and I hope they go back to their more neutral looking color palette but as of now it's a bit more saturated than I would like and there's also a slight greenish tint on certain photos using the primary camera. Focus is quite accurate and quick to lock on, the shutter speed is quite fast and the dynamic range is really really good and you can even make use of night mode in the daylight situations to kind of get that extra bit of dynamic range as well. Coming to the ultra wide angle camera, the overall image quality is pretty impressive especially in daylight situations considering that you get a much wider field of view compared to the primary camera and the dynamic range is also great. Now owing to the lower resolution of 8 megapixels when you pixel peep you actually notice that the overall detailing and sharpness is not all that great but then again even the other 12 or 13 megapixel ultra wide angle cameras that we see on smartphones isn't all that much better either. Now where the difference primarily comes is in terms of the noise that is evident even during daylight situations when you actually pixel peep and some of the chromatic aberrations as well that are visible when you zoom in as well. The colors are similar here and is slightly on the more boosted side like the primary camera. But the major difference here is that instead of having a green color cast, you tend to have a more purplish sort of color cast on the images at times. Coming to low light performance, I'll start by talking about situations where you have a mix of natural light and say artificial lights or where challenging lighting conditions are there and in these situations this actually does really really well and you get excellent dynamic range and the overall image quality is also great with minimal amount of noise. Now take this scene for example where by default it did not capture the highlights all that great and the image was a bit underexposed as well in the shadows but if you take a look at the night mode you see much better performance where the highlights are kept in check and you also get much more detail resolved from the shadows as well. Now when the light drops completely and you're talking about fully artificial or very low light situations then what happens is that a lot of noise is introduced and the overall sharpness and detail also takes a hit due to the noise reduction as well. Now it's worth mentioning that while this is evident and while the performance is perhaps not up to the mark when you compare to the daytime performance, this performance at night is still the best in the segment and I found it to be better than the likes of the Samsung M51 and the OnePlus Nord. Where it does even better is perhaps the ultra wide angle night mode which is one feature that was missing on many Redmi devices in the past but finally we get a night mode for the ultra wide angle camera on the Mi 10i and it makes a huge difference compared to the regular photo mode itself. 
One pro tip is to actually use the pro mode and make use of raw image capture in order to get better quality photos in low light situations, especially if you have a tripod or a stable surface where you can make use of the longer exposure to keep ISO down and the noise in check. Here are some images that I took at 30 seconds of exposure and the overall results are pretty good and is one of the best in this segment as well. And you can even make use of raw photos and edit them later in the daytime photos to get the best out of your images possible. Coming to portrait mode, the Mi 10i has a very large sensor and a pretty large aperture as well which means that you have pretty good subject separation even without using the portrait mode. Now take this photo of the flower for example and you can see how the natural blurring of the background occurs even with the portrait mode disabled and actually enabling the portrait mode does make it a bit more smoother and the bokeh looks a bit more creamier but it actually does not really need it especially if you're getting this close to a subject. However, if your subject is a bit further away then you can use portrait mode and you get good results as well and unlike some of the other phones which have a sort of softness happening on the subject when you actually use portrait mode this actually keeps the subject bang in focus and pretty sharp as well I'm not really sure how much of a difference the 2 megapixel depth sensor plays in this but I would say that it would actually be better if they could bundle a better macro sensor and actually take away the depth sensor completely instead of actually using two 2 megapixel sensors especially considering the fact that even the macro sensor does not output the greatest of photos in our experience and we have seen better performance from phones like the Redmi 9 Prime and the Note 9 Pro Max with the macro cameras. Now before I wrap up the photo portion of the rear facing cameras, I'd like to show you some interesting looking samples. Now these photos, believe it or not, were taken with the Mi 10i itself. Now before you go and say that I'm lying and these are photoshopped etc, I would like to say that yes, these are edited but they're not photoshopped as well. So these are basically photos on the left that you see that I took in during the daytime with the Meet and I and I basically made use of the AI sky replacement filter or uh, editing tool that's available on the Meet and I as well as other Xiaomi phones and it's a very easy tool and while you can replicate these and get similar sort of effect in Photoshop or Lightroom you basically need to spend a lot of time for it plus you need to actually know what you're doing. But in this, it's a few simple taps away and you can get dramatically amazing looking photos and I can't believe that these sort of results are possible with this particular smartphone. Now, it's also worth mentioning that the reason they look so good is the fact that they're not just changing the sky, but they're actually adjusting the white balance, they're adjusting the colors and a few other properties as well in order to make it look more convincing. Now, on to the front facing camera, which is a 16 megapixel unit. Now this is an f2.0 aperture and is housed in a display cutout at the front. The image quality from the front facing camera is good but not all that great and the reason I say this is because while at a glance it looks pretty impressive when you actually pixel peep you'll see that the sharpness is not all that great and not as much details are captured. At a glance it's pretty fine and for social media you would probably get away and it would look like a good image but at the end of the day it's not all that great although the dynamic range is pretty good especially when you turn on HDR. Now in terms of the portrait mode the edge detection was very good but again not perfect as you can see some places around the years especially it does tend to get things wrong and lastly coming to the video portion you can record a maximum of 4k 30 fps with the rear facing camera but only the 1080p 30 fps mode has eis involved while the 1080p 60 and 4k 30 fps videos don't have eis and as a result they do not look as refined as the 1080p 30 fps mode but if you're looking for the absolute best video quality then 4k 30 fps is definitely the way to go since you have best bit rate higher sharpness, detail and even great dynamic range although the dynamic range is something that's consistent across all three different recording modes but the difference is that in 1080p 60 mode there is slightly more issue in terms of the exposure fluctuating. Now in terms of the ultra wide angle camera this too captures EIS enabled videos at 1080p 30fps but you cannot go higher both in terms of frame rate nor in terms of the resolution. You can also make use of the pro mode and capture videos in log and then color grade it later to get much better looking results. Hey guys, this is Sandeep from Drive Atlas and this is the Mi 10i capturing front facing video 1080p 30fps. Let me know what you guys think about the overall sharpness, dynamic range, how well is picking up my voice in this windy environment and also how the overall stabilization is. 
So to conclude, the Mi 10i is one of the best performers in terms of the cameras in this particular price segment. At a starting price of Rs. 20 9, this is great especially if you are someone who loves taking photos be it during daytime or at nighttime or in terms of portraits. Two areas where I would say the competitors might do better than the Mi 10i is particularly in terms of selfies and also in terms of videos. I feel that the OnePlus Nord takes better videos any day and OnePlus devices have been known to take good video for a while now and in terms of selfies as well I feel that the OnePlus Nord is slightly better and maybe even the M51. But overall as a camera phone if you're looking for the ultimate image quality then the Mi 10i is definitely the best in this segment between 20k to 25k. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, do let us know in the comment section below. See you again in the next one and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button.